Greetings everyone, happy Thursday to you. After shooting my Facebook Live yesterday up here in the mountains, I got a request from a viewer to talk about attacks to dogs from coyotes. One of her dogs was viciously attacked by a coyote and it didn't end up very well for the dog. And I gotta admit, thank you so much for bringing that up to my attention because you're absolutely correct. Coyote attacks are the real deal. They really, really need to be taken into account. And a lot of us don't, especially if you live within a city or really close to a city. But I'm here to tell you, if you live in the mountains or you live in a rural area, and now they're even starting to find out even in downtown Chicago, coyotes are a threat. And they're a threat to humans, but they're more of a threat to dogs. In fact, over the last 15 years, over 500 humans have been attacked by coyotes. Some ended up in a fatality. And during that course of time, there's been well over 700 documented, and that's the, that's the ones that are reported on an average of about 100 per year uh, dog attacks or coyote attacks to small dogs. In fact, uh, small dogs account for two-thirds of the attacks to dogs. Dogs like Yorkshire, Terriers, Shih Tzus, Maltese, uh, your smaller dogs. And I tell you, spending all the time that I do in the wild, I have had a few run-ins with coyotes, and they are not to be taken lightly. And a lot of people focus all their energy on the big wolves, big bears, wolverines, you name it. But I'm telling you what, that old wily coyote, that's a tough little predator, and they're very versatile. They've been known to come up over six-foot fences, snatch your dog, and go right back over that six-foot fence. They've tunneled under fences that are two feet deep in the ground. They'll even come through your dog door and snatch your dog from the interior of your home. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. These are all true. They're all documented. In fact, one of the most uh, uh, strangest and most bizarre cases I've ever heard is when two coyotes were able to wriggle their way through a cat door. Yeah, that's right. You hear me again. Cat door. And they attacked the labradoodle that lived inside the home and dragged it out of the cat door a piece at a time. Yeah, so don't take coyotes lightly. When you add tenacity cunning, desperation because you're hungry, and opportunity, you've got the recipe for disaster. So let me tell you how to get this thing done so that you mitigate the risk of having your small dog attack. And trust me, Karen and I think about this all the time. We have those two Morkies. You know about them, Dave and Poe. Oh yeah, it's a threat. And we have to be very careful anytime we bring them out into the wild and up into the mountains. And with us building a home here in the mountains and and, and going to make this a full-time home here before much longer. Yeah, it's, it's a real concern. And so, therefore, I'm going to practice exactly what I'm about to preach to you. Okay, so I went up and kind of hunted down a few little facts here, uh, reached out to a few other colleagues, and just kind of got some feedback and what we all think to be is the best approach to this. Well, number one, I'm, believe it or not, keep your yard clean. That means scoop your yard. Scoop it. Coyotes want to eat your dog's poop. You bet they do. So do bears. So do other predators. Man, that food that comes out of your dog to them, that's just nothing that just went through a microwave. Yeah, about 101 to 103 degree microwave, and they're going to eat it. So scoop your yard. And if you're one of these people that you feel sorry for feral cats, do me a favor. Don't put food outside your house for a feral cat. Because if you do that, you'll be feeding the coyote twice. Get it? All right, a couple other things. Don't feed any animals, actually. Don't feed anything. You, you may want to put out a salt lick. You may want to put out deer feed. Anytime you attract animals near your home, you're attracting the animals that hunt those animals. So don't do that. You want to see a deer, see it with binoculars. See it from a long distance away from your home. You don't need to have this thing up close. Again, I'm not just talking about coyotes here. That's what the focus of this video is today. But I am going to tell you about bears as well. They're really dangerous and they're really fast. Oh my gosh, I, I may just save that for a whole nother Facebook Live. Uh, so bear with me on that. <laughs> I actually didn't mean to say that, but <laughs> we'll just roll with it. Okay, another thing is uh, make sure that you, if you have your dog out, you're taking your dog for a walk anywhere in a, in a rural area or a mountainous area where there's a higher incident of encountering a coyote, then make sure you have your dog on a leash. Now that doesn't guarantee you your dog won't be attacked, but again, because the animal, your dogs are in close proximity to you, a bigger animal, then there's less likelihood of that happening. But again, there are documented cases of coyotes 
appearing out of nowhere. I remember a client telling me, she said, one minute, Brian, I was standing there with my dog on the end of a leash. She had a, uh, a, a large chihuahua, if there is such a thing, but just bigger than your little tea, uh, teacup type chihuahuas. And one second, the dog was there. The next second, the coyote was there. And then the next second, dog and coyote are gone. Snatched right out of her hands. Again, so, but those are rare, very rare. And I know it doesn't matter if you're the person on the other end of that leash holding nothing, it's gone. Yeah, I, I get it. It doesn't, the statistics don't matter to you at that moment. But for the rest of us, I'm going to keep my little dogs on a leash. You bet. I'm not going to let them wander ahead of me because that's just going to be food for a coyote. You're begging it. These little dogs bark. They make noise all the time. They're just attracting attention. And all it takes is that you don't even need a starving animal. They just need opportunity. So make sure you do that. Also, if you have a fence, do make sure that one of the things that you can do is do something near the top of that fence. Do bury it deep into the ground. Maybe put some rocks underneath it, but perhaps something at the top. Uh, they make these things called coyote rollers, and all they are is tubes that are mounted at the very top of your fence. So if this is the fence, there's a tube that just kind of juts out at the end, at, at the very top and on the end. So when the coyote tries to scale, maybe I should be on this side over here, tries to scale, as soon as his paws grab that bar, they roll. And down goes the coyote, right then and there. They can't get up and over. Of course, you can put electric wire up there. That's something that will help deter coyotes. You can put bob wire, but gosh, okay. I don't want my home to be a prison or even look like a prison. Not a choice for me. Coyote rollers, let me think about it. But honestly, I don't even want a six-foot fence. So I'm just going to do a lot of supervision. So that's another thing. Don't let your dogs outside unsupervised. If you do that, you let your dogs outside on supervise these little dogs, again, you've already heard me. A big fence won't deter a coyote unless you put all sorts of apparatuses on it to help deter them. But you give them enough time and they know those animals are there, then they'll just keep working. And then that little uh, back half of the one acre that you have fenced in, that's where they'll dig that hole. And that's where they're coming from. Or you let nature do it for them. Tree falls, you're not even aware of it. Big old branch falls, you're not aware of it because that's way back over there behind those other trees. You don't see it. Well, that's just a ladder, like a scaling ladder, like they used to do back in the days when castles were under siege. They just throw those ladders up against that wall, shinny up those ladders real quick and jump inside the interior of that castle. Man, I've seen it. I've seen that happen. So, again, watch out for that. Uh, carry bear mace with you when you go for a walk. I've said that before for many reasons. In case you're attacked by a dog. In case you're attacked by a bear, I don't, in case you're attacked by a human, it doesn't matter. Bear mace is my tool. It is my number one tool that I have on me when I go for any sort of hikes out in the wild. I don't care what predator I encounter, whether it's on four legs, two legs, tell you what, I can get you 35 feet away from me. And distance is safety. So have your bear mace on you. You don't have any bear mace? Carry around a little air horn, anything that is loud, shrill. That alarm sound, I've talked about that too. Boom, get that alarm sound, bing. I mean, super loud. And if you don't have anything, give them you. Hey, hey, I mean, you've got to, you've just got to come after it. You've got to fully commit to it. You've got to tell that coyote right then and there. No, huh? Not my dogs, they're not your lunch today, buddy. It may be my neighbor down the road over here, but not me. Not my dogs. You've got to come after them. You've got to take the hunt to them. And I mean it. You can't, you can't half wave this thing. Animal know that. So commit to it. Save your darn dogs right then. There's no way, not to your, none of my force, not happening. So go after them. All right? They, I guarantee you, it'll work. It'll work. Predators just don't like that. They don't want to make contact. Uh -uh, that's too darn risky, man. So again, they're opportunists. Opportunists. They want opportunity. They don't want a fight with you. So do that. Uh, and then lastly... There are these things called coyote best for your small dog. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you a picture of it. So here we go. I, I, I looked up a picture of one of these things. Here we go. Bam. Take a look at that. Looks like something out of Mad Max, doesn't it? <laughs> but supposedly it works. And I'm looking and I'm thinking that would work. In fact, what is going to happen is I'm going to reach down, thinking about something else like I always am. And I'm going to snatch up my dog, and that'll be the end of it for me, too. I won't be snatching up my dogs anymore. But, yeah, they make these things called a coyote vest. They're Kevlar. Coyote can't bite through the vest. They put them around your dog's neck. 
they put them around their the torso. They have these spikes on them. Looks like some sort of mohawk or anteater on steroids, porcupine, what have you. But supposedly, these things work. I cannot give you any personal experience or professional recommendation on that. I just don't know. I, again, doing my research, I came up with them. And now I will tell you one thing that kind of has me a little doubtful on this. You know, any protection is better than no protection. So you may go for it, and a lot of people swear by them. But I also know just from coming across the bodies of dead wolves that got into a fight, when you look at their bodies, there's, nothing, there's not a mark on their torso, not a mark on their neck. Now, the next strongest appendage on that animal, so they're not going to go for the neck. That guarantees a 12-round fight. Instead, they punch holes in each other's skull. And I don't see a mask or a helmet on that Kevlar vest. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you can see it. But again, I'm not seeing it. And that means if that coyote really wants that, if he's just going to do a snatch and grab, yeah, it may work. I'm just going to grab you real quick and get out of here with you, take you to the same place, and then kill you, and then eat you. But if I'm coming in for a quick kill, I guarantee they're going to punch a hole right to that dog's skull. But anyway... That's my job, is to point out the good side and the bad side to you guys, so you got something to think about. Uh, I'm, never, <laughs> I'm not going to say some food for thought. No, okay. Go get, get back to serious here, because coyotes are a serious thing. So guys, think about it. Uh, again, if you live in a rural area, higher instance of, uh, do of uh, coyote attacks to small dogs, doesn't mean they won't go after your large dog. Remember the story of the Labradoodle. They will go after a large dog. That takes a really desperate animal. Usually takes more than, more than one coyote, two or more, working together in tandem as a team to go after that larger animal. But I'm telling you, I've had my encounters with them, and you, Brian is serious about coyotes. And if I'm serious about them, you should be serious about them. And if I'm a little bit worried about it, with my uh, Morky spending more time here in the mountains than back in the city area of Memphis, uh, yeah, and I have a worried wife, and Chase, eh, if anything, I may have to get one of these for me. I may have to wear this because she's really worried, and every time I make some little joke about it or whatever, bam, I, I get attacked. So, <laughs> okay, so be serious about it. Let's get this thing done. I uh, just want to put some information out there for you today on coyote attacks. And again, be careful. The biggest mistake I'm seeing a lot of people make is not cleaning up their yard and putting food outside and leaving their pets unsupervised. Those three, I guarantee you, are going to be a recipe for trouble. All right, guys, if you got something you want me to talk about, like this viewer on coyotes, send it to me. Send it to me. I can't wait to talk to you guys about it and do the research for you so you don't have to. All right, if you found this information beneficial and you think you need to share it with someone, please do so. And guys, stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll be back with you. In the meantime, stay safe. And if you're training your dog, make a great training day. I'll catch you tomorrow.